Hey, I wanted to show you this system I mentioned called Trinity. That's the orchestration layer, sort of agent ops or Git ops solution that allows me to manage dozens of agents, dozens of intelligence units. Each of the agents is its own GitHub repository that is constantly updated. Agents don't have to be code creators, they're general purpose agents, like the examples that I showed you right now. Now, what you're seeing on your screen now is the system I already configured and uploaded, but we will go through this procedure together. Each of these boxes is an individual Docker container with a code running within that, with the actual agent that is pulled from a specified GitHub repository. This agent gets the credentials injected at the system level. On the repository level, we don't store that. It becomes this independent intelligence unit running in its own container in the YOLO mode. So it's specifically for YOLO modes. This is the family of agents that I use every day for running my business, and I will talk about them later. Let's pick a random one, say Ruby, for example, and see what it looks like. As you can see on the agent page, there is a basic system monitoring. Over here, there is detailed information about Ruby as an agent, specified in a particular format for every agent that is compatible with Trinity platform. And you can see what you can talk about. In particular, Ruby is my social media manager that runs my content and everything. What sub-agent it has, what commands it has, what MCP service it has, etc. You can chat with an agent if you want to. You can go to logs, you can go to credentials. As you can see, these are all filled up for me. I can share this agent with my team. I have schedules that I, if I want to create a schedule to run it in a fully autonomous mode to find the high viral potential tweets, it's going to be running that on the schedule. And I will be able to track the execution. So over here, we actually can start that just to show you, say, every minute. Also, Git is over here. As I mentioned, it's integrated. So it's pulled from the original repository where the agent template is stored. This is like a version management and template management for the agents. And then it is syncing back the changes that we're making here when we're changing this agent, and we can be changing this agent right from here. We have file editor, we have a chat where we can just ask it to change particular settings about it, and we can sync it back or sync into its own branch. I loaded a bunch of these guys over here. The beauty of this whole thing is that through the MCP server, which I configure over here, the MCP key for myself and stuff like that, super simple HTTP MCP server, Let's take a look at what can be done. So here you can see my code that is connected through the MCP to the server, and we're going to ask it to run a few more collaborations between agents. The point is just to show you the demo of what we should see here. As you can see, it started blinking, so it called Ruby for something. It indicates that Ruby is currently working. Ruby is going to call one of the other agents, again, through the centralized MCP to accomplish a particular task. Marvin starts working, as you can see, also blinking. Then we have this arrow over here just to see what has been executed. Later, if I want to replay what has been happening, I can go to the replay feature and see how this agents collaborated. I want to dive a little bit into the agents themselves because this whole platform is just the infrastructure. It's how I deploy those agents, how I version control, how I monitor them. But the actual value comes from the agents themselves. And for that, I have this little family of agents. So Fred agent is high level responsible for the rest of them. So we can just put it in the top of the hierarchy and reorder this to make it a little bit more visually clear who is responsible for what. Basically, it runs commands, but I often collaborate with these agents, as you can see from my own cloud code, because it is connected to the centralized MCP where it manages all of this stuff. But if we think about specific individual agents, Cornelius is a very interesting beast. Cornelius is a knowledge management system that I use. It's a combination of old Zettelkasten method with artificial intelligence that allows me to store the knowledge and keep it and develop it and then access it in order to brainstorm, write content and stuff like that. And I'm talking about my insights. Say I'm reading a book and I have some insights and I'm storing it there. And Marvin is actually an extension of Cornelius. It's a kind of next step of that. It is using that to achieve a different goal. This is the brain behind the operation that is constantly developing and storing its own set of values, perspectives, thinkings, etc. It has its own autonomous loop in which it's picking up the relevant data, analyzes the market, analyzes what's going on in the news, and then changes its personality 
so that next time other agents can talk to it to understand how to interpret events in the world and make sense of the data. Marvin and Cornelius both are using a combined system of memory that is a combination between the vector store and a graph-based store, but it is based right now on Obsidian. And what you can see over here is these four different brains. I don't remember which one of them is Cornelius and Marvin, and a couple more others that are in different projects. But the point is, if you know Obsidian, you understand what I'm talking about. Each one of these is a network of interconnected nodes at the end of the day, they're all just basic text nodes in the knowledge base. And among these text nodes, I have a belief system, a set of belief systems, hypothesis, opinions, principles, etc., that this particular agent has. And then in the agent itself, I have a hierarchy of commands and approaches that are keeping this belief system updated according to certain rules. The real value comes from those approaches and rules that I'm using to weight the new beliefs, update them, etc. So at the end of the day, what I'm achieving is that this is a self-developing organism that keeps its knowledge and belief system organized in a connected manner, where it keeps different notions about the world in a particular worldview and then uses that. The last one I wanted to talk about is Corbin, because this is actually my day-to-day -day business management agent that I use for everything business related from basic checking emails to lead research and the rest. Of it. It's pretty detailed. Corbin on its own is a business management assistant with a whole bunch of different ways it has access to my CRMs and stuff, but a very specific example. The trick is that all of these guys work together to achieve the results that I need. As I develop this system and it becomes more autonomous, that becomes a lot more Interesting, what I haven't mentioned in this particular video, agents have a way that I've developed where they can self-improve based on the information they're learning and based on how they're progressing towards the goals that they have. And with the use of the memory systems that these guys have inside themselves, they can store the experience, learn from the experience and self-improve on the procedural level. So in terms of how they do things, they're getting better all the time, depending on how they're performing in achieving their particular goal. Hey, look, if you understood what I was talking about in this video and you like to work with this kind of tech and you want to keep working with this kind of tech, maybe you're interested to look into this project in particular, please send me a message or a comment on this and uh, let's connect because I have a whole group of people who are quite interested in building this autonomous intelligence systems. And I think together we can make more difference. Thank you.